First class with left, two back can be you. Lil Ty said, Bitch, me, uh, Lil Ty said, Bitch, me, uh. First class with left, two back can be you. Lil Ty said, Bitch, me, uh, Lil Ty said, Bitch, me, uh. Yeah, off a couple of times, so I don't need you tonight. The first time I heard about J. Kim was probably in 2018, thanks to the YouTube channel Underground Soul. At that time, he was known as J. To The Kim, and what struck me pretty much immediately was how this artist really had his own vibe. Three years have passed now, and I think I have never been more right than that day. Ever-growing artist, with every new track, J. Kim shows how his mind is bustling with creativity, drawing inspiration here and there, but never failing to create his very own sound. Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Kai of Caviar, and today we are talking about the future, we are talking about J. Kim. Jay, you don't really love me. Born on November 17th, 1998, in Daegu, South Korea, J. Kim spent his early years there until his family decided to move to the United States when he was two years old. They stayed in Maryland for about five years, and then moved to North Carolina as he was seven. So he basically grew up in North Carolina. It's his home, but also where he discovered a true passion for music. At the age of nine, he indeed attended a music program organized by his church over the summer. They could pick an instrument to learn, and that's how he started to play the guitar, but how he also literally became obsessed with music. From this point, he dedicated all his free time to guitar. Like, even when school started again, he would come home, maybe do some homework, and then play the guitar until he would go to sleep. But with this event only, J. Kim could have easily ended up in a rock band or something along the way. So there is actually another decisive event to take into account. We should all thank this one friend who, around the same time J. Kim started to play the guitar, played Fireman from Lil Wayne's The Carter 2 album on his iPod as they were going on a field trip. So yeah, it's thanks to this friend that he had his first taste of hip hop and that he fell in love with Lil Wayne's music. Then, from Lil Wayne, he started to listen to more and more artists like Kanye West or Kid Cudi, while also listening to bands like Linkin Park, American Rejects or Paramore. Little did 10 years old Jay know that all these musical influences would blend together seamlessly and surface in the type of music he would end up creating years later. There is one thing he already sensed though, is that music was definitely gonna be the love of his life. I was 10 years old actively like discovering <laughs> hip-hop and punk mm. rock and punk pop and all that and it was just a big blend of um, influences that like jump started my love for music. Um, but I'll, I'll say like definitely from around that age, like I became obsessed with music. Like music is definitely like I knew since I was 10 years old, like music is definitely like the love of my life. Now, how did he get on SoundCloud? During his late junior or early senior year of high school, so around 2016, with some friends they started to freestyle for fun in the car. But one day, they decided to record a song and to upload it on SoundCloud. The crew was called Hotbox Gang. And from this, he started to release songs as Day to the Kim as well. Things getting serious over 2017 with, for instance, the track Cloner. So that's pretty much how it all started for Jake Kim. Now when it comes to his music, let's say that he's a type of artist who is constantly working on the development of his own sound. To quote him, I make what I like and what I like changes a lot. And yeah, he ain't lying clearly. To make things a little bit easier, there have been like two main shifts in his music. So kinda three main eras up to now. The first era starts in 2017 and can be described as nocturnal trap. At the time, he was listening to a lot of R&B trap. To give you an idea, Travis Scott was one of his biggest influences, but he was also listening to artists like Party Next Door, Forever Friday, or The Weeknd. So concretely, if you listen closely to the songs he released around this time, you will notice that the beats he used were for most of them pretty hazy. As for his flow, he was already quite versatile. Going as a for a sharp delivery. Yeah. 
I got a switch in the dab, I got a much of my pace. I got a hit on my back, they wanna take me away. Yeah, I got a bitch so mad, they wanna take on my pace. I got a problem with kids, I left it all in her face. Yeah, who are you trying to be? Why you need someone to leave? Yeah, coming to me with a plea, baby, you saw me as genie. Or switching to a more laid back pace, to the point some songs might give you some cloud rap vibes. Then in 2019, with the release of tracks like Makeshift or Sing Stars, in a way, his vibe kinda got more complex. Some beats were still quite nocturnal, but he also started to go for brighter sonorities. This has been partly induced by the fact that he was listening to a lot of Emerop. Artists like XXXTentacion, ENGR, Lil Peep, Tommy Ice, Kevin Cozy, 909 Memphis, Steel Eleven, or PPG Casper to name a few. So you can notice the increasing use of beats based on electric guitar samples, like with the track Don't Speak To Me. And more generally, beats with a higher focus on melodies. The most telling example for this is probably Seeing Stars, in which you can hear a harp or even a flute sample. So this new era is characterized by a broader range of beats, but it also stands out because it's kinda over this period that he started to get more confident with his voice. Like he kinda started to stray away from the usual ways of rapping to add more singing, something which has been increasingly getting popular with the rise of emo rap and anti rock. And this clearly added a whole new dimension to his music. The second shift happened over 2020. Last year, Jay kinda rediscovered pop music thanks to artists like Black Bear, The Weeknd or Dominic Fike, and therefore that's something you can directly feel in his music. Noises with its retro vibe. Kicking in the back door, trying to make it all make sense. Chasing off the right choices. Love it when you tell me that you'll never leave me alone. Making all the right noises. Kicking in the back door, trying to make it all make sense. Or tracks like On Me or Conversation, which are clearly tinged with pop rock sonorities. You're holding out on me, my shit been blowing up. You still won't talk to me. Look how you did me wrong. I'm sipping on a strong. I buy you everything. New season, St. Laurent. Got you feeling like it's all your fault. I can't concentrate on it. I write these songs. Fuck your conversation. I cannot. Recently, it seems that Hyper Pop piqued his interest. He appeared on a clearly addictive track by Yet Junior 24. So let's see if you will explore this type of vibe even further. So yeah, J. Kim's music is rich in influences. He doesn't want to be labeled as a specific genre kind of artist. Yet, what's super impressive, and also promising for the future, is how his musical color is still super distinctive. As I told in the introduction, J. Kim really has his own sound. I used to joke and say that, at this point, the genre is J. Kim, but to be honest, I think I really mean it. Let's now talk about his creative process. You know it now, J. Kim is listening to music all the time and he has super wide taste. But actually, besides this, J. also listens to a lot of beats as well. During the interview he kindly gave me, he explained that when making a song, he has to hear the beat first. But he's kinda picky, especially when it comes to the melody, which might have something to do with the fact that he is a guitarist. Well, it's also because, as he said, you can't fix trash drums. While for melody, it's more complicated. So every day he's going through beats until he finds one to his liking. Then he finds the BPM, so the beats per minute, and the key. 
And from this, he starts recording. Usually, he just starts freestyling, and after two or three freestyles, he tries to turn it into words and keeps the catchiest parts. As for his lyrics, most are based on his own life experiences. But he's also drawing inspiration from what the people he knows have been through, as well as from movies. His all-time favorite is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, starring Jim Carrey, but also from anime. Which makes sense since he watches anime a lot. And when I say a lot, it's really a lot. So yeah, basically he will watch movies and anime and try to create a similar vibes with his lyrics. I think now we can all agree that Jake Im is as ambitious as he's hardworking. Like he's ambitious, but he works for it. So his short term goal is obviously to put out more music and to keep getting better. This involves working on how to manipulate his voice, but also on improving his producing skills. Like he produced a bit already, have been producing since he started making music actually, but that's not something he really focused on either. However, getting better at producing also means more creative freedom. So yeah, that's typically not something he wants to neglect. Now you might have noticed I didn't share MVs, and that's because he wants to find the right team to start such a project. He kinda has something grandiose in mind. He definitely wants the production quality of his first MV to be high. Probably something in a movie-like atmosphere. As for the collaborations, if you are up to what's going on on the Korean underground scene, then you might have already heard him with Effie, Derek, Flavor Dash, Hevel, and Yajuno24. So he would like to keep on making collabs with his music friends. But he also wanna work with Kick Smart Boy, Lil Kirby, and Yaon. Besides, he would also like to work with Tommy Ice, PPG Casper, Glaive, Eric Dioy, or Brackens. And his dream dream collab is nothing else than Frank Ocean, who is pretty much one of his favorite artists of all time. But all projects aside, what matters the most for him is definitely to keep on having fun making music. If I make music and I'm not having fun, like I cannot do it. Mm. Like if I, if I ever stop having fun, like making music, I'll probably just, I don't know, I'll probably just move to like a remote island somewhere. And... So that's it for today. If you want to know more about J. Kim, listen to more of his songs. I linked all his music and social platforms in the description below. And I will probably release J. Kim's full interview next week. Maybe more, maybe less, the time to do some editing. So if you don't want to miss it, just subscribe to K-Pop Caviar on YouTube and hit the notification bell. Or you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The links are in the description as well. Let me know what you thought about this video and this new content. Stay safe!